Hello Power App Makers, this is Ahmed Saleh again. I have a quick tip today and tutorial for you. Have you ever tried to use uh, the scrollable screen control uh, in the Power App uh, Canvas apps and uh, have uh, too many sections in that uh, scrollable screen that uh, user can, yes, scroll down to these different sections, but at the same time, uh, maybe you have too many that you want to just add the option for them uh, to navigate from one section to another with the, uh, you know, the way that we do in the website anchors, right? So basically by clicking in a menu item uh, in, in a menu bar that you have on the side of your screen, they can just jump from one section to another. So how we do that, this is what we're going to uh, see today. So I have this example right here. Uh, I have only four sections, so I have the first section is information, as you can see, and then I have the, another section here is the, uh, the contact, and then I have orders as my third section, and then the fourth section I have is shipping. As you can see here, all the time in all these sections, you can see that I still have my menu bar uh, to the left side of the screen, and that's, that's a, set, a set place. It does not change from section to section. Uh, so uh, the user can scroll down and up and also can click actually on these menu items to go to different sections in my scrollable screen. So if I click on the contacts, as you can see, it's actually jumped to the contact section. And then if I click on the sh orders uh, section, it will jump to the order section. And if I click on shipping, it will actually give me the shipping section. And this is just the end of thing. There is nothing below that. That's why you can see the rest of this here. But because this is just, this is clearly like everything that we have in this section in the shipping, right? And I can go back, jump back to my information again. So how we do that? Uh, very simple and very easy with a, a little bit of a trick right here. So as you can see, I have the scrollable screen and to add the scrollable screens, again, uh, you click on new screens, you go to templates and you can see this is the scrollable screen that we have here, right? Then I have containers. So my first container is the container I'm using to build this menu items bar, right? That's to the side. That's the one. And again, there's too many videos how you can create these menu items within a gallery and obviously use a container for the responsiveness. Uh, so I have this container. I have the gallery. The gallery has my items. I have four items and I have only two properties for each item. I have the ID and I have an icon, right? So I'm just, that's what I'm using. So icon that to hold the icon, you know, shape uh, and what icon I'm using. And then the have, I have the ID that I will use to build this uh, navigation process uh, from one section uh, to another. Uh, as you can see here in this container, when you add a scrollable screen, you always going to see this canvas, right? This canvas control, right? And this canvas control will hold these data cards or those sections. So you can add, obviously, initially we'll have only one section, right? That's mean you will have only one data card, but you can always actually add more section. This, this from here. So if I click here, I will be able to add another section. When you click add another section, you will add another data card within that canvas control that we have right here. Going back to my first container, in this container where I have the menu items bar, I have the container outside the canvas, not inside the canvas. The reason for that, I would like this menu bar to be visible all the time in all sections when the user actually scrolling down or up or navigating from one section to another. So I want them always to be able to access that menu bar items, right? That's why it's outside right here. Then in this uh, canvas uh, control that we have, I have, the, as I said, the four data cards. Each data card is a section. And in each data card, I'm actually inserting a container, basically. So I'm using a container, right? And in that container, this is just a container. So when I, I will publish this as a managed solution, and I leave it in my GitHub repository. So you will find this in the description of this video. So uh, you can use the container to add different controls. Maybe you can add edit forms. Uh, you can add 
uh, galleries, you can add uh, table views, whatever you can add, you can add it obviously inside these containers, right? And to really using the container is very important, especially if you want to keep your, your app is very responsive, like to different kind of resolution, different kind of screens. So it's a great idea to do that. But if you don't want to use the containers, that's completely fine. It has nothing to do with uh, the, the, um, the trick that we are doing here to jump from one section to another. What it does is actually the button. So this button is uh, the, the important part right here. If you actually uh, check and, and, and the, the function that calls sit fo focus that we use in this example, and this is how we do this. So basically when the user click on, on uh, this, one of these menu item in my menu bar, they basically, uh, uh, I call this sit, function, sit focus function to basically sit focus on a control. Sit focus basically is to allow the user to enter a certain kind of input uh, uh, or, or to access or to interact uh, with a certain action. It's basically like you are heading basically the tab, right? To, to, to move from, from one control to another, from one text box to another when you use the tab, right? This is what sit focus is. Uh, and I'm using sit focus here is basically just to uh, scroll the screen down and up based on what we click on uh, the gallery items here or the, the, the menu uh, bar items right here. As you can see, this button here, I have it, in, in for example, in the section shipping. I have it obviously in the back, so it's hitting. Uh, I cannot make it invisible because if I make it invisible, does not is not going to work with sit focus function. Some would say that while we're not using set focus to work with the data card or work with the container because it does not work with these controls. Set focus function work with very limited control. If I can remember, there's four or five of them. Uh, uh, one of them is the bottom, I think the label or the text. Uh, I, th I don't think the label, but it would be definitely with the text box, right? Uh, and other two or three controls, but n nothing like, you know, containers, nothing like galleries. Uh, nothing and you cannot obviously use sit focus with controls inside a gallery as well or inside a control so if i have if i added this button inside the container here i will not be able to use sit focus with that that's why i have it just outside the in the data in the data card right so uh, uh i have it in the back so it's visible it's in the back so it's just behind on my control if, if I, I can make it, you know, any place, but I will just, you know, make that all the colors invisible in that case. Uh, one important property, as you can see here, this is the Y property. And here the Y property is calculated dynamically. And this is uh, the important trick right here. So I want actually this button location to be in a certain place so that, you know, uh, it will actually show me uh, all the section view. So basically I would like to place this button uh, in the last third, uh, in, in my case here, in the last third space, uh, right, of that data card or of that section. So to do that, so what I did is basically I used the container, right, uh, my container here, as you can see, I used the Y of the container, and then I added to the Y of the container, I added the height of the container that divided by two. So I wanna actually start where actually the Y of the container starts, and then I will add to add to add that half of the height, you know, just half of the height. So I'm going actually, this is the container Y, and then I will add the, uh, the half of 50% of the height of the container, and then I will add also the height of the label that I'm using as a title, as you can see here. And this is basically what it gives us this kind of, you know, formula, you know, uh, calculation to, to have basically the the button right here. You can also do this using obviously the, the data card X and Y to position this, right? So that's that's basically it, that's the trick. Now going back to click. So in the click, obviously I'm using the, the item ID uh, that is part of the gallery table I'm using in the gallery.items and I'm using the switch function. So if actually the gallery ID is basically number one, that's mean this is gonna be the obviously the 
clicking the first you know item in my uh, menu items then I would like to sit focus on that button that button in this case is going to be in my first section uh, and, and and so on and so forth so this is basically it that's that's as as simple as this to have and you again you know here I have only four sections you might actually have something that has you know ten sections you might use this uh, with a scenario where the user actually fill different kind of section informations uh, in, 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 in different uh, sections, uh, different part of information in different sections in your screens, right? So uh, this is going to be very, very useful, uh, you know, to have it, uh, you know, this way uh, and using uh, the anchor, uh, you know, uh, way to navigate uh, between sections in the same scrollable screen. So again, uh, last time you click on contact, you go back to information, I can jump to shipping, I can go back to contact, and then I go back to orders. And again, you can have as many as you want right here. I hope to see you uh, next time in another tip and uh, trick. And uh, if you like the video, share, subscribe, and uh, have a great weekend.